get the cost caught by the neighbors. What is up, Matoire family? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Antonio Matoire and I own a 2017 BMW 340i. So there's a couple of things that I want to do in this video. First, I'm going to change these spark plugs. Uh, my car roughly has around 35,000 miles on it. So it's about that time to change the spark plug, especially since my car is tuned. And secondly, I am going to be changing the oil again. Uh, it's way overdue. For those of you that have been following the channel, I changed my oil before I moved here to Vegas. And obviously I drove my vehicle from Arkansas to Vegas. So with that being said, let me go over the spark plugs and oil I will be using for today's video. So the spark plugs I decided to pick up were the Champion spark plugs. There is the part number focus right there if you guys want to pick some up for yourself i always use ngk spark plugs in the past so honestly the only reason why i ended up picking up the champion spark plugs is just to try something new no i did not get them a step colder with my car being tuned i know a lot of people will like swear by it that you have to get your spark plugs a step colder if your car is tuned for it to perform better and whatever the case is, I've never had any issues with my car performing. When I take out my spark plugs right now, since this would be the first time I'm taking them out, I'll go ahead and take a look at them and see how my car has been responding to the stock gap. But as I mentioned before, my car has roughly around, around 35,000 miles on it. So usually on like an OEM car stock, it's probably recommended to change your spark plugs. I would say anywhere from like 50 to 60,000 miles. Um, but definitely when your car is tuned, you want to change it before then, probably like around the 30,000 mile mark. So I am there. Um, mind you, my car hasn't been tuned the whole time up to 30,000 miles, but it has been tuned for about a year now. So I did want to take them out, read them, and just see how they've been reacting to the way my car has been performing. I'm not sure what spark plugs are currently in my BMW. Like I said, usually it's NGK, but I do know some people that their BMW comes stock with Champion. So we'll find that out when we take them out. As far as the oil I'll be using for the oil change, I got some Liqui Moly 5W30. Now I get a lot of questions all the time about the 5W30 and why I decide to use 5W30. And it is honestly just preference. So you can actually look it up. I'll leave a link in the description, but the B58, you can actually run 5W30. So I decided to use 5W30 just simply because my car is tuned and I kind of want a slightly thicker oil. It's like I said, there's nothing wrong with running the 0W20. So really it's just preference as long as you know, the car is rated for 5W30, which it is, then that's just my preference and I'll continue to use 5W30. I wouldn't recommend running a thicker oil like 5W30 if you live somewhere very, very cold, just for the simple reason that obviously the colder it is, the thicker your oil will be. So if you already live somewhere that's really cold, uh, you don't want any issues with your car and the oil being too thick because it's cold outside. So I happen to currently live in Las Vegas, Nevada. so. <laughs> It rarely gets cold and uh, it's always warm and also my car is garage kept so it's never outside even on those cold days it'll always be garage kept so the slightly thicker oil of 5w30 as compared to 0w20 um, is not going to harm my vehicle in any way but if you guys have any other questions as far as oil spark plugs or anything else bmw related you can always hit me up on my instagram at matwire but just like that let's go ahead and get started with these spark plugs so a couple of things that we'll need for today's videos. As far as the oil change, you're obviously going to need your oil. But I have seven liters of oil here. The B58 takes about six and a half liters. I have my man filter. So this is obviously the oil filter that's going to be replaced for the old one. And then obviously you'll need your oil filter socket to get the filter off. As far as the spark plugs, you will need your actual spark plugs. You'll need a torque wrench and you're actually gonna need this for the oil change as well. A ratchet. An extension with a thin walled socket for your spark plugs I got this from ECS tuning I'll leave a link in the description below and then obviously I just have a socket set and then you'll also need an E8 e Torx socket for the coil packs all right so obviously looking at the engine bay after you remove your engine cover these are your coil packs right here you have one through six in the very back you'll notice that the sixth one is covered by this trim. So we are gonna have to remove all of this trim in order to access the sixth one. But before you start on anything, just make sure to disconnect your battery. As you can see, there obviously is a bunch of wires that go into your coil packs. You wanna make sure that you're disconnecting the battery so that nothing goes wrong. And then after you've replaced everything, you can go ahead and reconnect your battery. For those of you that don't know, you just remove this portion right here. The battery is located right there. Uh, just remove your negative terminal, that's all you have to do. And then also put a 
microfiber or just something on your trunk so that way it doesn't close because if it closes while your battery is undone then you're not gonna be able to open it so now that my battery is undone i'm just gonna go ahead and remove all the excess trim so that way i can access my six coil pack I figure it's just easier to do it in the beginning so that way we can just go ahead and do all the coils at the same time then having to do one through five and then remove the trim and do the six all right so for this one over here i already undid the top portion but you're just going to turn these a quarter turn to the right and it is a 10 millimeter socket once you do that you can remove this little portion uncover that and then once they're all turned at the top you can go ahead and just pop it out so same thing with this side just kind of quarter turn all of them just like that now that the trim is removed on both sides you can go ahead and remove this rubber line that goes all the way across and it does have a wire within it so be careful just remove that wire once the wire is removed it should look something like that and then you should just be able to pull up on this all the way down just like that all right so sound deadening is not budging um, i'm just gonna go ahead and remove this bar so in order to do that you have to remove these caps to expose the bolts needed to remove it so let me go ahead and do that you can just remove these caps with a flathead screwdriver or really anything a pick tool whatever you got lying around that could fit underneath them and quick shout out to keys motorsports um i've been doing a lot of leaning on my vehicle trying to reach everything back here and so this definitely protects the paint definitely protect my bumper so Thank you guys. So the socket size to remove these bolts are 16 millimeter. Couldn't find my 16 mil, so I'm just gonna be using a 5 8 and it's pretty much works the same. Once you get the bolts out, out of the top, your next bolt is gonna be right here. It's actually an E18, E-Torx on both sides once you remove that rubber. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. So once you get this off, just lift it and it'll come off as one piece. Lastly, in order to remove the sound deadening, you're gonna have to remove this plastic portion right here, and they're all 10 millimeters. So there's some back here. So I just ended up just removing three of the screws from the plastic side. Didn't have to remove any on that side. I just did this side, and it gave me enough room to lift it up and just kind of move the sound deadening out of the way. So as you can see, I now have access to that sixth coil pack back there. So obviously I'm just gonna show you guys the steps on removing the first coil pack, and then obviously it'll be the exact same for the other five. So first things first, you're going to wanna remove the wire. So in order to do that, it's these, you know, BMW clips, all of them are the same, pop it up, and then you can pinch it. Move that. Once that's removed, you're gonna want to unscrew the coil pack itself. So this is actually an E8 e torque screw. So go ahead and get that out. And then when you get the screw out, it won't actually come out. It just kind of hangs like that. So once you unscrew it, just kind of wiggle. And it should come out just like that. So as you can see, the spark plug's actually down in the hole. So let's go ahead and get our thin walled socket to get it out. So as mentioned before, this is the setup I'll be using. Ratchet with an extension with my thin walled. And this is actually adjustable with a built-in magnet so when I do take out the coil um, it'll just stay within the socket and it'll be a lot easier to take out. What you want to do is just kind of get your socket in there kind of wiggle it around until you feel it kind of seat and then just want to undo it like that shouldn't be too hard once it comes undone just unscrew it all the way once it's fully unscrewed, pull it up, and as you can see, there's your old spark plug. So as I mentioned previously in the video, these that came stock were NGKs. So as you can see, BMW NGK spark plug. I'm gonna go ahead and just line them up from the front to the back, so that way at the end when I'm looking at all of them, I can see uh, pretty much just kind of compare all of them when reading them. So first one is out, let's go ahead and get the new one in. So to replace it, I'm just going to slowly feed it down in there. And I'm just gonna screw it until it starts giving me a little bit of resistance. And then that's when I'm going to get my torque wrench. So these are gonna be torqued down to 20 Newton meters. If you forget, it's actually on the box, let me show you. So as you can see right there, it'll tell you to the right, torque down to 20 Newton meters. 
once it's torqued down, go ahead and put your coil pack back. And then once you screw back in the coil pack, go ahead and plug it back in. So as mentioned before, that's how you do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the rest of my coil packs. And then I'll catch up with you guys at the end once I have all six out. So as far as putting your engine bay back together, just do everything that we did in the beginning in reverse order. So putting your plastic trim pieces back, this rubber piece, make sure you tuck the line again, and then just replace those dust caps when you're done screwing those bolts in. But that's pretty much it for the spark plugs. All right, so checking out the spark plugs. Um, they actually don't look too bad. I know I had mentioned earlier in the video that they had potentially could be running a little too rich, but if you look at them, they look normal. Um, there's no sign of like super, super dark areas. And when I'm talking about reading them, I'm talking about here at the top. So pretty much if it was running rich at the top, it'd be very, very dark and kind of oily looking, but that doesn't seem to be the case with these ones. These ones kind of have like a bronze tint to it, which is normal. If they were running too lean, they'd be kind of white towards the top. The only thing that's concerning to me is on cylinder six. So I would say out of all of the spark plugs, cylinder six is the only one that might be running a little lean just because of the white right there. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's not too white to where I'm concerned about anything, but just overall reading the spark plug and just noticing that it is slightly white here at the top because if these spark plugs were bad, the electrode at the top would be kind of worn down a little bit. Yes, it's okay that I changed them. Did I have a little more life in these spark plugs? Probably. But once again, you know, with a tuned car, right around 30,000, I would say 30 to 40,000 miles, you wanna go ahead and change these. All right, now that we're finished up with the spark plugs, we're gonna go straight into the oil change. I'm not gonna go too in depth with this oil change. I have done a video on the 340i doing an oil change before I left Arkansas actually. So if you're interested in a more in depth oil change video, I'll go ahead and leave it right here. But for the sake of time and me not wanting to make this video super long, I'm just gonna do a quick rundown on everything and then change the oil real quick and we'll probably go on a test drive afterwards. All right, so real quick, starting off the top, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna unscrew this oil cap just so that way draining the oil down towards the bottom will be easier. So there's a little flap right here that you're gonna wanna undo. That'll expose your drain plug. Your drain plug is right there. Your drain plug is a 17 millimeter. Once it's loose, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put your can or whatever that's gonna catch the oil. It's always better to change your oil when your car is warm. Just like that. So while the car is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and get that out. The socket size is a 32 millimeter. I got this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. I'll go ahead and get that off. So now the old filter is out. I'm just gonna go ahead and take it straight out. It comes straight out just like that. So once you take out the old filter, there's gonna be an old O-ring right here. And then the man filter comes with its own O-ring. So you wanna replace this O-ring from the new set that you got. Once that's put back on, you wanna make sure and you just kinda of lube it up with the old oil a little bit. Once lubed up, really easy. Just gonna take your new filter and just literally push it in. As far as the drain plug, again, the man filter comes with a washer. So you're gonna replace it with the new washer. Just put that on there. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this drain plug with the new washer before we go ahead and put the new oil in. So once you're done tightening that drain plug, it's gonna be 25 newton meters. Go ahead and screw back in your new filter and then the torque specs on that is 25 newton meters as well. Now it's time for some oil. To make your life 10 times easier, you're gonna to wanna to use a funnel. The B58 engine takes 6.9 quarts of oil, which is approximately 6.5 liters. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and empty this big one in there, empty one of the smaller ones in there, and then just empty half of the second one liter bottle. So to make it easy on you guys, there's nine notches going up, and then the 10th one would be right here. So literally just go one, two, three, four, five. Once it gets to the fifth notch, you wanna stop and everything up here, you wanna pour in. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, is at the fifth notch. So we don't need any more oil. Go ahead and put this away. We'll go ahead and get our car on the ground and then we will measure the oil level. All right, looks like it's finishing up. 
and engine level is okay and it'll kind of give you a diagram over here showing you where you're at so i'm max but it's still in the green so i'm good to go so now that everything's good to go spark plugs are changed oil is changed i'm gonna go on a little test drive uh, i'm gonna do a little pov drive for you guys with the gopro on my head so that way you guys see what i'm seeing and uh we'll see how everything's performing all right i hope this is a good view for you guys and you guys can clearly see what i'm seeing a few things to note my miles per gallon is not that bad it is not 11 miles per gallon that i'm getting in this car uh it's just because when i disconnected my battery it kind of reset everything so i reset my miles per gallon and reset my clock i had to reset that as well and the check engine light isn't because of my tune it's actually because of this cts turbo intake this intake always throws a check engine light and it's kind of annoying the only way to get rid of it is to reflash the car and then it kind of gets rid of it for about three two three days and then it comes back up so it's always a pain but um i'll probably end up switching to like an mst intake or something like that in the future but anyway i've been driving on comfort mode for a while now and everything feels really good um i haven't ran into any issues so i'm switching to sport mode now just to kind of put some more stress on the car and see if everything's good the throttle response has definitely increased since changing the spark plugs that can be one indication that your spark plugs are going bad is if you feel like your car feels sluggish or your throttle response isn't the greatest and i was running into that problem um i would step on the gas and i just wouldn't you know i wouldn't go anywhere for a second and then i had to step on the gas more and then i would actually accelerate so i think my spark plugs had something to do with that because my car feels a lot more responsive right now close the seems like a lot of wind so we're gonna go ahead and go on the highway just to kind of see how everything's doing you don't want the smoke so yes guys I am still getting wheel spin <laughs> even though I'm rocking the Michelin Pilot Sport Plus as you can see um, yeah, I'll probably end up trying to switch my tire setup again. Uh, the Michelin Pilot Sports aren't really doing it for me. I know it works for a lot of other people, but um, go ahead and leave a comment down below and what what tire setup you're using and if it works for you or not. But uh, let's go ahead and give it a nice little pull. Dang. So as you guys just saw, let me go ahead and close this. So as you guys just saw, my wheels are spinning at like 60, 70 miles per hour. It's kind of ridiculous uh, at this point, but um, that's what I'm currently living with. So yeah, these Michelin Pilot Sports aren't really doing it for me. I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if it's because I only have the rear and not the front. Other than that, everything else feels amazing. The car feels like it's running good. The spark plugs, that should be good for another 30,000 at least, and then oil change, you know probably another 3,000 miles I'll change it again so I did want to give you guys one more pull I'm um, just kind of entering the highway I did want to keep it nice and clean so that way I'm not getting a whole bunch of wheel spin but let me see here we go wow that feels great dang this thing is moving guys oh my goodness once I get some tires to actually put down the power to the ground I'm really excited to get some tires. Guys, excuse the red mark on my forehead. That was from the GoPro head mount. But um, that just about wraps up today's video. If you guys have any questions whatsoever on anything BMW related, the spark plugs, oil change, anything, you can always hit me up on my Instagram, at Matwire. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. We got a lot of content coming your guys' way, and I'm very excited for it. And if you like this video or it helped you out in any way, go ahead and smash that like button. And as always, guys, Remember your goals and don't give up until you reach them. Peace. Excited just to see me, wish I felt the same way. I know I should probably